for tuning in to Byte Talks. My name's Nicola Kemp and I'm Editorial Director of Creative Brief. I'm really excited today because we've got a brilliant session um, planned under our theme of creative nonconformity. And at this unique moment in our collective and individual history, we believe that there's a genuine opportunity to challenge the status quo of what we've always done, to resist the routine of what's come before, and really just open our minds to improving the effectiveness of the work we create, but also its broader impact on society. And this opportunity to see the world differently is particularly powerful when it comes to travel marketing in the wake of the pandemic. So with me today to discuss some really, really joyful um, work, um, I have Annabelle Cordelli, who is Vice President and Global Marketing and Brand at Virgin Atlantic, and Alice McGinn, who is Senior Planner at Lucky General, who leads the strategy for Virgin Atlantic. So thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you very much for inviting us. So to kick off, um, we've been through such a turbulent time in the wake of the pandemic. And, and I, I think professionally and personally that, that that's absolutely true. But when it comes to travel is, is, is perhaps there's a, almost a, an extra um, layer to that. So I'd love it if we could just chat a bit about how you got this work out into the world. And Annabelle, could you tell us where you were as a business and a marketing leader when this campaign was being conceived. Could you share a bit about the creative journey? Yeah, so it was it was a, well over a year ago and probably we were in a, a state of real flux and a mix of Zoom calls and trying to get in to meet teams. But I think what we were focused on is we knew that there was going to be a, a future, that there was going to be an end and start that, that planning of what what was going to come at the end of you know as, as we re-emerged from sort of pandemic and so there was a lot of you know I suppose uncertainty and things but I think what we were supposed to really trying to focus on was what is it that we want to do we knew there was huge amounts of pent-up demand everyone was reassessing life everything in it and it, it presented a great opportunity for us to represent you know Virgin Atlantic uh, in the world in a post-pandemic world both I think to you know re-engage with our existing customers, but also to get you know millions of people who haven't tried Virgin Atlantic um, to come and, and consider us. So we were really thinking about the opportunity and what that looked like, to be honest, for the next five, 10 years, not just you know coming out the other end. So we were really clear about what the Virgin Atlantic promise was. And the real job for us was to, to work on you know, the platform and the springboard from that to get to work that would enable us to tell that story. So we spent, you know, the, the journey sort of was yeah, creating the platform and obviously that was underpinned with lots of lots of research, really distilling the insight to get to, you know, a thought which for us extends across the total, you know, Virgin Atlantic organisation. And it's, as I say, a springboard, yes, for communications and work, but also more broadly than that. Um, we explored lots of ideas. Uh, that were, there was not a shortage of ideas, but what we kept coming back to was you know a really shining example of Virgin Atlantic's difference is its people and when we talk about people we mean our own people but also our customers and because we spent so much time listening to people and you know what really mattered to them you know you, it was, there's, there's still a dynamic in travel where you know there is hierarchy there is formality um, and convention and what what people love about Virgin Atlantic is you know that sort of disappears. They're treated like, you know, individuals, um, you know, no matter where you're sitting in the plane, you have a, an exceptional experience. Um, and, you know, when you, when you, what we centered around the sort of shared philosophy of, you know, what we believe and what customers believe and got to this, you know, idea, which you now see in the market. It's so interesting to hear as well, just what a Brit big, brand purpose it is to some degree in terms of it's not just about the advertising it's really um going beyond that and and it's such a an interesting time more broadly in terms of that reset moment that we've all had and 
And Alice, I'd love to bring you in here, okay? Because full disclosure, I've written about marketing for many, 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 many years. So we very much overuse the word iconic. It's, it's one of those words where it's applied to lots of brands, but Virgin Atlantic is really, it really is an iconic brand, right? So a campaign like this, with this iconic brand that offers such a marketing moment, but also this really pivotal time in in our lives professionally and personally where we you know the preciousness of that ability to just get on a plane to go somewhere we've really kind of relearned that in the wake of the pandemic so what what was your your take on it in terms of both just you know the the, the iconicness of the brand but also the the shifting understanding of of, of value and and what consumers really value in their lives yeah. Well, you're right. I mean, it is a completely iconic brand. It's a once in a sort of career opportunity to work with um, Virgin Atlantic, which is incredibly sort of daunting, but you kind of almost have to put that to one side and kind of pretend it's almost not there, but really do actually lean into what is it that people are wanting from travel in this. It is, it's a changed era. Um, and I think Annabelle sort of touched on it, but it's a classic ex example of how when you take something away from people, they actually appreciate it more. And what came from that period of sort of forced self-reflection that the pandemic brought about was actually, I think we all did consider what was genuinely really important to us. And what we found through you know, research and talking to people was that actually travel for people is an essential, whether that's you know, literally to go and see family and friends or just you know, an essential for our personal sense of well-being and, and health. Um, so I think whilst we sort of expected travel to bounce back and there would be pent up demand, I think the thing that everyone has been very surprised by is just how high the demand for travel is coming back uh, sort of post pandemic, if we can even say that yet. Um, and I think, yes, that has taken everybody by, by surprise and it is an illustration of how important it is to all of us in our lives. But I think the thing that has changed, and again, we sort of heard this from talking to people, is that I think there is a realisation from people that we probably won't go back to travelling to the same degree as we did maybe before the pandemic. So a really different shifted consumer attitude that if I'm going to do this, I'm going to make it count. So I think people are valuing, you know, experiences that actually touches that make a trip special, brands that actually, you know, go beyond just the kind of, airspace between airports and actually care about people, care about the planet. Um, so I think that was the big or a key consumer shift that we've had to sort of reorientate around. And I think whether that change, you know, that will change again in light of the current sort of cost of living crisis is, is yet to be seen. But I think early indicators show that people are actually cutting back on things like footwear and apparel uh, before potentially things like holidays and travel, because again, they are just so essential to us and our lives. That's so interesting. And, and, and particularly that desire to kind of make it count um, and, and kind of how much consumers are, are, are putting in emotionally as well to the, the experience of, of travel. And Annabelle, I'd love to bring you in here. What, what's your view? Because it's always difficult to sort of predict how wide and long shifts are, but what do you see as kind of the, the enduring changes in, in the relationship that consumers have with, with travel in the wake of the pandemic? I think Alice has you know, touched on it beautifully. I think people are really choice, going to be really choiceful about the brands in their lives and the experiences they have. And I think, because as I said, we've all reassessed lives, I think we're thinking about which are the brands that I choose? And I need to have an alignment on the values of those brands and the brands that I'm going to pick. So I think there's something quite purposeful in the choices that we're making at sort of, you know, big picture. But then I think, you know, what Alice said, I think travel is, the pandemic's just reaffirmed, I think, the importance that travel plays in people's lives. And I don't think that's going to change. You're just going to have a consciousness around it, both in terms of, I think, when you're going to do it, why are you going to do it, the brands I'm going to choose to partner in my life. And I think that represents huge opportunity for Virgin Atlantic when you think about what the brand stands for and the type of special experience that we, you know, endeavor to deliver every day and want to keep reimagining, you know, for the future as well. So that, you know, as needs change and, you know, we're keeping abreast of those, we can anticipate 
you know, what changes, what new things can we bring into that so that we keep that travel experience really relevant, really special and brilliantly different. And, and I love within the, can, the campaign just how joyful the travel experience is, right? And, and also I love the fact that it's incredibly inclusive because I think about a lot of the coverage in the marketing press and it's almost like it's kind of binary. You can be a really purpose-driven DNI focused brand or you can be a really joyful brand and and what's magical about this campaign is it really shows that the lens of inclusivity can really deliver that that joy and and I love this whole concept of opening the world to everyone no matter who they are who they love or what wherever they go and, and it's such a powerful um ethos and Annabelle, I'd love to get a bit more depth around that in terms of what that really means to Virgin Atlantic. And you touched on it right at the beginning of the conversation, but in terms of your people, in terms of being really inclusive as a business and in terms of finding ways to make travel safer and easier for the LGBTQ plus community. Could you tell us a bit about, about that, um, that scope? There's a lot in there. I'm delighted <laughs> that you talked about this you know, this, I want this really personalised experience and purpose. And for me, it's not one or the other. And what we've been really working hard as a team is people still want those special experiences that feel like they're for them. But they want that to, you know, be, be have a positive impact on the world as well. So I think that's, that's what we really tried to capture um, here. And I think it comes back to, you know, truth about us and what we stand for. So this idea about championing the rich, you know, the rich individuality of, you know, our people and customers, you know, we want people to, you know, march to their own drum beat, fly their own path, you know, see the world from a different angle. We genuinely believe that. And, you know, that's our sort of call to action. And I think we look at that always internally and externally. So, you know, think about internally, we have got a whole sort of philosophy about, you know, be yourself. Um, be yourself every day and that's existed for a very long time at Virgin Atlantic and you know when you can be yourself you know you bring your best self to work you embrace the sort of diversity in others it leads to a really you know inclusive environment where everyone's feeling like their unique perspective and contribution is valued and it's real sense of belonging and I think when you're like that, you are going to be your best at work and you bring your breadth of thinking. And that's when you get that you know, brilliant creativity and ideation, collaboration and all that goes with that. Um, so I think it's really a truth of us. And, and, you know, we have got, you know, networks in terms of communities and things that really that really cultivate that. And then, you know, externally as well, I think we've got a really long history. And you mentioned, you know, LGBTQ plus. We've got a long history um in champion and it dates right back to you know Richard Branson decades ago actually but if you think you know more recently there are some really good I think illustrations and demonstrations of, of us taking action and and you know putting a point of view out in the ones and and trying to join with others to champion a change um in 2017 um, we signed the, U the UN's um, new LGBTI standards of code of conduct for business. And again, it's about tackling discrimination, you know, policies and things like that around fairness in the workplace and eliminating discrimination. We've got a really long history in the Caribbean as well. Um, in 2020, we were one of the founding partners that opened for business. And again, the idea behind this was how we how are we driving change, but also doing that through a of what why that's good for the community and the and the and the economy as well because there is a lot of um, discrimination still there and it's a, you know it's a place that you know Virgin Atlantic fly to and feel you know passionately about um, and and how we're going to drive change so that everybody is welcome there and championing change so the things that we've done around um, uh, you know training programs in you know, Caribbean hotels, partnering with some of the hotels and tourism association, so that you're helping people at a grassroots level on some of that diversity training to you know, look differently at the situation. Um, and I think there are lots of examples like that where you know, we are trying to take action or it might be you know, a bigger demonstration with a pride flight. I think a lot of people are quite familiar with that in 2019, a, a real sort of demonstration of what we believe and again, championing change and, and lots of smaller grassroots activity coming off that as well. So and we've got longstanding, you know, partnerships with people like, you know, 
Attitude Awards, Manchester Pride. And again, this is about using, you know, ourselves to put ourselves forward and make a difference um, in the space. And this, that's just one example, but I think that, you know, extends to other areas in, you know, more purpose-led areas. And I think that's going to continue. You know, that's the challenge on us is just to keep making change, keep championing the changes so that there is true, you know, inclusivity and we, and we really value that in the world. And it's it's so interesting, and you and you really touch on it that the ability to bring your whole self to work, and how that actually gives you the conditions where you can create the best work of your lives because you're not wasting loads of energy masking or you you you're able to show up, and that it's such an interesting space. And Alice, I'd I'd love to get your your view on that because especially when it comes to inclusivity and marketing it's so much more than just brilliant casting. It's, a, it's about who's behind the lens as well. And do you think that there is, is a broader shift of foot? Because we are all coming out of this phase where we've had no choice but to bring our whole selves to work, our families, our pets. You know, it's been, it's been um, a real shift um, in how businesses operate. And do you think that that lens of diversity, inclusion, of equity, of bringing your whole self to work is really going to shift how how we operate as an industry more broadly. I do, and I think um, particularly from a communications perspective, if we talk a little bit executionally to begin with, I think brands and agencies are on a bit of a journey when it comes to diversity, inclusion, and equality, particularly in the communications that they put out into the world. And there was a moment in time where we had to confront, you know, the lack of representation in communications. But I'd hope that where we're now getting to is a space where actually realizing that actually simply just holding up a mirror to different communities isn't enough. That's just tokenistic. So I think what we were trying to do with this campaign specifically is an idea all about individuality. So we worked really hard to think about actually what's the character of each of the people included in this campaign and who are they, why are they there, why are they making a journey, you know, why are they wearing what they're wearing? Um, and I guess to borrow your phrase, that sense of who is their whole self, let's say they're not just somebody cast in a piece of communication. And to do that, we actually worked with an organization who put us in contact with people who represented the communities we wanted to showcase in our communications. But they were also people, I think it's very interesting, who were experts in filmmaking, storytelling, marketing and, and strategy and the conversations that we had with them i think hopefully enabled us to get to a much more um authentic representation of the people we included in the campaign so um for example we didn't just want the uh, gentleman who uses a wheelchair in the advert to be defined by the fact he uses a wheelchair he is a person taking a journey so that process assisted us in a number of ways, yes, in terms of the casting, but then also really in how do we craft people's characters to be genuine and authentic. So we had loads of conversations about things like choice of wardrobe. You know, how might that character feel in that moment traveling? Because, you know, I as a white European woman can't necessarily understand that perspective. And we got some really brilliant really nuanced sort of understanding of how people might behave, what their gestures might be, what their, their body language might be. I think my favorite example that just completely opened my eyes was we uh, working with an older black gentleman on the character who is uh, in our upper class. Um, uh, he's our upper class ca uh, character in the TVC. And he opened my eyes to the difference between West African suiting and styling versus West Indian suiting and styling. And just a beautiful little anecdote of going, well, that character is hopefully that bit more authentic um, for having gone to that sort of level of detail. So I do think that's where, as a sort of industry, we do need to really get into, um, yeah, not just holding a mirror up to different communities, but actually how do we genuinely represent people's, you know, get deep, deep sort of characters. And then also the other thing that we did was then combine that with, um, uh, I think, more hopefully more authentic representation combine that with actually being very aware of the fact that we couldn't just talk about championing individuality in, from a comms perspective. We also had to, to live it out. So that's why as a very sort of fast follower to the launch of the campaign, we then came out with action. So Virgin Atlantic have um, changed their tattoo policy to enable their crew to actively showcase their tattoos. The first UK airline to do that. 
but that's because we passionate, passionately believe that, you know, communicate, advertising and action have to go, go hand in hand. And I think that's another way in which um, the communications industry and brands are having to, to think about actually how do we genuinely demonstrate a commitment to diversity and representation and inclusion in the, in the work that we make. That's such an interesting example. Um, Annabelle, I'd love it if you could tell us a bit more about this tattoo policy, because it's so interesting, isn't it? Particularly when we're talking about um, diversity, equity and inclusion, that shift from just brands having a, a role in, in awareness raising to brands really taking action at a really holistic level. I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear, hear a bit about yeah, that. I think policy. It goes back to the, the networks that we have internally. And I think each of our network groups are um, have an exact sponsor and and literally the whole sort of ethos of that is how you get ambassadors and the conversation around things because it's it's that group of people who are going to be able to have the ideas recommend changes and I think we've got a couple of examples of that you know the makeup policy which is back in 2019 and uniform standards around that came from you know an, an internal voice rather than how about this and I think it's really listening to, to your people and then how that then goes through the business, take, take some action. And, and of course it makes complete sense whether that's, you know, showing up in you know, the, the uniform you want to work, you know, makeup policies, t- tattoos. I think it's all starts from listening to, to our people and how that is an expression of, you know, individual in, and individuality at, at work. And I it's think, really- yeah, it's our most recent demonstration of it. And it's a great one because it's quite topical now. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's so fascinating that kind of, shift of employee engagement to kind of employee advocacy and how that can really infuse your your creativity and and shifting it slightly um obviously the climate crisis is is really really um top of the agenda so you've got these kind of two trends one you've got this huge joy and reappraisal of travel for growth for reuniting families who've been you know separated for so so long and and a reappraisal of business travel of when that's that's necessary but but Annabelle I mean what what's your view I mean what do you think is the role of of travel brands in in tackling the climate crisis I think we've absolutely got a responsibility so I think you know it goes back to there is this wonderful sort of social and economic benefit of travel but with that goes a responsibility and I think it, you know we're all in that and we've all got a responsibility to do it and because of the you know magnitude of that challenge it's going to require you know cross industry collaboration you know, that's just essential and I think the entire aviation sector is committed to achieving you know net carbon emissions by 2050, 2050 and looking always for greener ways to travel you know Virgin Atlantic's got at least 15 years you know strong record of leadership and I think you know it's making changes that take a long time so now we operate one of the youngest fleet in the sky which has a material impact um, in a positive sense but that's that's taken you know multi-billion investments over a decade um, across our fleet so that you can get the age of the average aircraft down to you know under seven years and then it's the fuel efficiency that goes with that and that that impact has had a you know, 20% reduction in our fleet carbon emissions. And it's committing to changes over the long term that are going to drive the change. And we're absolutely along with other you know, aviation and also partners. I mean, we've recently signed um, the necessary um, supply for SAF fuels. So it's, it's how we're going to continue to partner you know, ourselves with other aviation, but the entire supply chain so that we can make changes for a more sustainable you know future that you know for for the planet for for us and our you know future generations that's so um interesting to hear and 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 also that long-term commitment and investment Mm -hmm. because the the challenge that we always see um from a consumer perspective as well is this idea that the climate crisis is a problem too big to solve um rather than a problem that actually really demands unprecedented Um, responses and collaboration and we've we've really seen that in the industry as well with with initiatives like ad net zero and and Alice I'd love to get your view here in terms of the consumer expectation side of things do you think consumers expect more from travel brands in terms of almost solving helping to solve some of these problems 
for consumers? Because we've seen all the, the never ending to-do lists that consumers are facing. We've seen lots of data on digital exhaustion in the wake of the pandemic. And then we're seeing the cost of living crisis. And actually do, do consumers need to lean on, on brands a bit to, to sort of help offset some of their own decisions, if that makes sense? What, what, what's the expectation from consumers here? Absolutely, as you've described, we actually did a piece of research, remembering Annabelle, uh, back to the development process, but we did a piece of research and we discovered that, you know, whilst people, they do care about the impact of the planet, of the impact of air travel on the planet, they're also daunted by the fact that, you know, what can I personally do? And being completely honest, a lot of people, they don't want to give up or change their travel behaviours, particularly in an era where you may only be doing this once. It's not like people are necessarily planning on doing this multiple times. So um, that I think we heard quite clearly that they're looking for brands to help them in, in making uh, more, I guess, positive choices and for the brands to be, to be leading the way. And we saw that on a couple of different dimensions. Yes, obviously climate um, impact is an immediate sort of association with this, this sector. Um, but then also expecting brands to as well, you know, what is their commitment to the communities that they represent? What, are, you know, what are their responsibilities to the, the destinations that we serve? So there's a sort of like big stuff, but then also a real appetite, I think, for how do we help our passengers, our customers make more positive choices the whole way through that customer journey? Because it's not just about offsetting um, fuel, for example, but what are the, the things that we put into the craft that, you know, make for a very special experience? How can they also be, um, you know, doing positive and, and good things uh, for people and planet uh, as well? Um, so I think there is, uh, it's, it's a huge task and it's one that I think that has to run through the absolute DNA of the entire experience. Um, but it's a very exciting one because I think it, it actually enables us to see the world differently and think about actually how do we do things, um, make positive changes, but then also positive changes that lead to a joyful and much better travel experience? Because I do think people have become fatigued by the fact that, you know, pre-pandemic, particularly short haul rather than long haul, but, um, you know, air travel had become just so functional and everything had been stripped out and was an additional extra and a sort of self-service buffet of, you know, just take the bits you want. Um, but I do think the action that we're going to have to take uh, around people and the planet is a really exciting opportunity to to reimagine the whole experience actually to be much more positive. I love the fact that you you mentioned the joy element of this, right? Because, and I know it's very much part of the British psyche in terms of here's here's a lot of doom and gloom about customers having to wait a long time for their luggage, but actually when you go to the airport at the moment, the most overwhelming thing is people being reunited that have been sort of separated for so long. And, and, and that, that impact, you know, that, that impact of people not being able to travel, not being able to see their families or, 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 or travel just for the joy of travel, right? I, I'd love to get your view, Annabelle, because this is such a joyful ad. And I, I feel at the moment that we all need a bit of a bit more joy in our lives. And we always have this perennial date in the industry of, well, there's not enough, there's not enough humor in advertising or there's not, you know, and, and this is a campaign that that does deliver that that real joyful um, moments, really, and, and, and acknowledgement. I mean, what do you think is the role for a brand like Virgin Atlantic of, of bringing the joy back into travel because we all need a bit more joy, right? Absolutely. And I, and I think it is our job. I think reminding people about, you know, travel in your life and experience with Virgin Atlantic, that's absolutely what we should be doing because I don't, it still is going to be one of those important things in your life. So I absolutely see it. It's my job to ensure that we are inspiring, you know, millions of people to get traveling, not just traveling, traveling with Virgin Atlantic, I might, I might add that. Um, and I think and I think that's about, it's back to what I said on, you know, why why us? And I, I, I firmly believe that, that you know, people want to buy brands where there's an alignment of, of values. Um, they also want a brand that's gonna deliver against their needs. Um, and it comes back to this, you know, this wonderful marriage for me of personalized experience and purpose. So really nice if you've got some values I can identify with, but I also want to make sure I'm having a special experience on those moments that really matter. And then I think it's on us to 
keep you know reimagining what that looks like because people's needs will change you know in 23 24 25 and that can be everything from reimagining what the dining experience looks like the little touches when you're on a special occasion those thoughtful touches when you're on your fine for your you know 50th birthday or on a, on a special holiday right through to bigger initiatives and we've talked about a couple of you know a couple of day, equality wellness you know sustainability they're all things that we're thinking about and how we're going to take action in some of those places and translate that into the experience um and you know make make it a better experience for everyone traveling with us but also make a difference in the world it's such a it's such a great um challenge and it's, it's such a great response to that challenge as well and i i, I really um enjoyed um the, the fact that a lot of these decisions and these the, this journey for this campaign are, are, are not either or decisions, they're and decisions, which I think sometimes, it, especially when we're discussing things like brand purpose, it becomes really binary. Like, is it purpose or is it is it going to be that brilliant personalized experience? And this campaign just shows so beautifully that, that you can do both. Um, and I'd love it um, if you would both leave the audience with with one key learning from this campaign that they can they can take into their work to infuse their work because we know that driving cultures of creativity and curiosity is so important um, both to kind of creating work that really matters but creating working environments where people really can bring their full selves to work and and really thrive. Um, and that's not not always easy um, in an always on um, ecosystem. Um, so Alice, what, what would be your takeaway? Um, I think it's probably the one that where I personally felt like I learned the most through the creation of this campaign. And I think it would be if you genuinely want to present yourself as a brand that is, you know, really is open to everybody. It is that authentic communication isn't just about holding a mirror up to different communities, but really ensuring that authentic character characterization of whoever it is that you are representing um because i think yeah that was a big personal sort of learning moment for me as we created this campaign because it wasn't necessarily it obviously wasn't the driving objective that annabelle and the team gave us for communications we need to get millions more people um traveling with virgin atlantic um so a very commercial objective but actually i think it has uh, grown as a, a kind of outcome of the campaign that actually how important it is to us that everybody also sees uh, Virgin Atlantic as a very welcoming brand where everybody can also genuinely be themselves. It's really really interesting point and and that richness of storytelling really comes across as well which is is just is is really lovely to see and and Annabelle what what would be your key takeaway? I think mine would be get hold of the things that you really feel are, you know, brilliant, distinctive, special about your brand, and then get the people who see what you see working with you on that. And I think you need to pick the partners that are going to work with you on really putting your arms around that because you're going to you know, challenge it, shape it, ideate against it, reinvent it, get all those sort of things. And I think it's that, but you hold, you know, that ambition of what you're trying to achieve, the focus, and then the flexibility around the collaboration, whether that's, you know, the, the strategy or the creativity, whatever it is, that's, that's probably my big, big learning. That is a, a brilliant takeaway and a, and a lovely reminder of just how much of a team sport creativity is. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you so much um, for, for taking the time out um, to talk us through this campaign and, and all the different elements around it. Um, there's so much um, to think about, um, but really that real um, incredible blend really of, of, of purpose and personalized experience and, and also not um, being daunted by working on such a an icon iconic um, brand. So thank you so much for your time and for showing us how you um, saw the world differently. So thanks so much and thanks everyone for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you.